Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am back! And on today's episode of Bananas, I have a very strong, literally very strong person. My today's guest is Marina Shafir, the big, big problem. Enjoy! Party time, excellent! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, look who I have today. Today's episode on bananas is going to be very unique, uh, especially for me because I'm actually uh, meeting uh, this person for the first time like that. Uh, and it's a special person. It's a very strong and powerful woman. Uh, and not just, uh, you know, literally, not just like speaking in general, but like literally. Super strong, <laughs> literally a super strong person. Please welcome Marina Safir. Did I say your last name correctly? Shafir. Shafir. It's okay. Okay. I get it messed up all the time. Okay. Uh, Marina Shafir. Uh, we hopefully go. we can edit this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marina, thank you for finding time for me. Не за что. Не за I've, что. I've been, I've been, I've been really like looking forward to it because it's just a, a different person, like. I've been talking to wrestling people like constantly all the time. Of like, course. This is wrestling is like 24/7 around here, so it's nice to interact with someone who is in entertainment but like not wrestling. I wrestle evil. <laughs> there we go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I with try your vocal to. Cord. <laughs> I try to. I definitely try to. Marina, um, this uh, specific season on my YouTube channel is called Party Time Excellent. And I like to start uh, with the same question for my guests all the time, asking what does party time mean uh, for Marina Shafir? What does it mean for you? a specific person, day of the week, specific time of the day. What does party time mean for you? Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to answer this like not as a, as a mom. Okay. Because as a mom, party time is like, all right, let's get in the bathtub and uh, mm -hmm. let's start getting cleaned up and ready for bed and all that stuff. Because yeah. that's one party. Like, married life party time is, hey, we got the little monster down. Oh, like, okay. 40 minutes early. <laughs> let's go to party town. Exactly. You know, like, that's what it is. Yes. <laughs> time is of the essence and we literally are starting to realize that we need so much of it and we um, don't have enough of it yeah. and we never get it back and now we're just yeah maybe like a glass of wine a stretch in the garage where we don't say anything to each other we yeah. just kind of you know share space yeah and yeah that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> I'm actually so happy you brought this up because I really wanted to talk to you about the time in general. The idea and the essence of time uh, in certain lifestyles is completely different. Like uh, having enough time to do certain things for one person is completely different than for the other. And you are a mother. You are a supernova of wrestling. You mm -hmm. are a very beautiful person, extremely beautiful woman. You look amazing. So that also takes time. People don't realize that. And you are a wife. I follow you, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of it, so it's okay. <laughs> a, no, absolutely. You should, because it's beautiful to actually uh, follow you. And later, after we um, change the topic a little bit, I will tell everybody how we started talking. But, oh, cool. Yes. <laughs> but tell me that, because you just mentioned, you know, the married lifestyle with a, a child, being a mom, but also pursuing your dream. This is not easy. It's, it's probably one of the dumbest, hardest things I've ever decided to pursue, like under the circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, it's tough. It's tough, like, it's tough balancing it all out and making sure that you know, my energy is present energy. My energy is, you know, 
loving energy. It's, it's, this is the time that I'm having like the most, I have a, I've had the hardest time. I can't even like talk, can't even <laughs> put my words together, but it's, it's just been really hard. Some, the, the hardest stuff that I have is just making sure that I'm there and I'm present from either my husband or my son and, and myself, because this business is so draining and until you really learn how to like conserve, uh, it's just going to keep draining you. Yeah. And I'm a white belt. So, you know, I will totally own up to, I've had such a hard time learning how to balance it out and being married and understanding that like, okay, you're married. That doesn't mean, uh, you, your effort just stops, yeah. you know, it's, it's like respecting your partner and the fact that they have needs and desires and mm -hmm. things they want to talk about and respecting that and letting them know that that avenue is always open. Even when you're having like really hard fucking day, like yeah. you still have to let your partner know what's going on because mm -hmm. they can't read your mind. And absolutely. I totally it's agree. Hard. I, uh, I don't have the same lifestyle, but I've been a little bit there, just a little bit. Yeah. Um, I used to be married, so I know Ooh. how difficult that is to, um, you know, pursue your uh, career choice and or goal in life and at the same time be present all the time. And even when you do a great job, that's still sometimes not enough. Um, let me ask you, uh, when you were creating your family, were you already in this industry or, or was that something that kind of came after? Um, I was not in the wrestling industry okay. before I got pregnant. My husband was, I okay. was fighting. I was, I had two, I had a really bad neck injury that uh, caught up to me and I ended up losing uh, two fights in my professional career and just not being prepared for those days because I ignored a lot of things. Gotcha. And, you know, I had to bite the bullet on that. I'm still, uh, you know, it's still a lot of, like, letting go of and, under mm -hmm. like, just being nice to yourself because holding stuff against yourself is, like, never, it's never good for anybody. Never good. Never yeah. good. Yeah. But, no, I wasn't in the industry. What happened was is I got pregnant, packed up my shit in, like, 10 days, moved to Florida and moved in with my fiance at the time. And that's what I felt like I needed to do. Like mm -hmm. more so than the insecurity, the fear, like mm -hmm. all of that was there. Like I, you know, just, I just wanted to feel safe because it's like such a vulnerable time. I just mm -hmm. wanted to feel safe and taken care of and, um, how it didn't, it didn't matter like how I just needed to feel it somehow, you yeah. know, like, yeah, but I had a roof over my head. I was able to, you know, provide for myself and my husband yeah. and you go through it. Absolutely. But, absolutely. Yeah. And then like I had our son, my husband got signed with the WWE mm -hmm. and, um, about a little over a year after he was born was when I got a contract offer. Oh, nice. That's beautiful. And because of my association with like friends in the business. Absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, I'm one of the four horsewomen. I'm going to be one of the horse four horsewomen for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just, I mean, they never really did thank anything you. with the opportunity, no. but <laughs> thank you for, thank you for sharing. I'm, uh, the reason I'm asking is, uh, that, um, and, and everything will make sense throughout our, our conversation is how important is acknowledging, uh, when we can afford to feel a little bit more vulnerable, when we can afford to feel, um, 
you know, small and and vice versa. When we can't afford and we have to roll our sleeves and do what's best for ourselves and for our or, or either our career or our life in general, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Growing up, I always looked up to my mom. My mom uh, was rarely home because she had to work a lot. Uh, she mm -hmm. uh, is a nurse still and she always was. And I always... Um, maybe partially growing up as a child because I was missing her. I was always, uh, her, the, her her figure as a mom was always somebody that I can't touch, somebody that I can't, um, I don't know, um, reach. Connect with? Con like and, I, and I can't reach it because uh, she was always busy. She was helping other people. And in my eyes, she was a, a big, strong, powerful woman that not only had a big family to take care of, alone for the majority of the part of the mm -hmm. time, but also help other people. So I see that a lot in many women nowadays. And um, you contacted me a year ago, um, triggered that in me. So uh, guys, I want to tell you how we met. Um, Marina actually just DM'd me um, on social media um, and just acknowledged uh, the, the, mm -hmm. the existence of, of the band and presented herself as a person from the same country. So Marina was born in, in Moldova. I'm super mm -hmm. proud of that because I know Moldova is a very small country, but it has so many talented people spread around the world. Oh, yeah. So, so there's many. Like, there's UFC fighters from Moldova who are killing it. There is. There, there you was, go. Uh, I am the first female professional wrestler to be hired by the WWE from Moldova. There was a guy, but you know, he's not there yeah. anymore. And just like me, but it's <laughs> just, those are like little, little pride things. Like that's going to be Absolutely. down in history. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It, like, it will be, it will be, you know, this it's, it's kind of the same with, with our band. We are the first uh, band, especially in the alternative industry signed to a label from in the, in, you know, from Moldova. So it, it was pretty you know, pretty interesting to be contacted by you, especially in the way you did, you know, mm -hmm. we, we, um, uh, the idea behind, behind it was to collaborate eventually. Oh, uh, yeah. and maybe that will still happen. However, guys, I want to mm -hmm. tell you what happened in my head. After talking to Marina a little bit, I obviously started following her and we started following each other and I started just notice uh, Marina's lifestyle, her being a mom, her being so strong and powerful. I absolutely love sports. I work out every day. I don't do anything professionally, but I always had an intense love for sports. Growing up, I did Taekwondo and a bunch of other stuff. I really, really always loved it, right? So it fascinates me to see such dedicated, especially especially women, uh, women, because we get so much to do when it comes to family. We really do. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's just the way nature chose, I guess. Um, and, and just uh, being able to still do it and mm -hmm. honestly do it even more fun. I see all those videos with your child <laughs> and your husband <laughs> wrestling. That makes, makes me smile all the time. So I wanted to say thank you because not only it's a big pleasure to follow you, but also you inspired me to do something that I never did before. And that is the main reason, obviously, uh, we were already talking and I knew we, we are going to uh, be friends for, for, for forever. But the yeah. main reason inviting you here, I want to share with people how, without even knowing, you inspired me to do something I never did before. And really what I mean is um, you inspired me to write about a topic that I never touched before. So I always write lyrics based mainly on my own life experience and mainly on on my own or what I'm going through at the moment or something from the past, uh, something like that, right? Um, but here I chose to write about a strong and um, warrior-like um, character, specifically female. And the reason I never touch that topic is because being a female uh, in the metal industry, I get 
asked so much. Oh, does it feel special? Does it feel worse? Does it feel better? How does it feel? And in a way, I won't lie, this question bothers me uh, very much because oh. I think that, uh, especially when it comes to art, especially, there should be no gender. There should be no sex and no, because it's all about feelings when it comes to art. And male and female has feelings. We can cry, we can be sad and happy. We can all have the same feelings. So this question always bothered me. So whenever um, people ask me things like that and they're like, well, are you proud to be in the legion of powerful women mm. of metal? I'm like, what is that even? You know what I mean? I don't know. I understand it and I don't understand it at the same time. I have sisters and growing up, I always wanted to hang out with boys. I always was more boyish, more like, and I'm in the band with boys. And for me, that's the most natural thing ever, right? Yeah. But um, getting to know you and your lifestyle and just, just being friends with you made me want to really write about this warrior character that actually, uh, when I was writing, I was thinking about my mom as well. Just like uh -huh. I mentioned her uh, prior, my mom was probably the first uh, woman that inspired me the most in life. Growing up, I, I thought I'm gonna be a, a a nurse just like her, and you know, like she's been through a lot. Um, it. It wasn't a very easy life um, growing up, and obviously it wasn't very easy for her. But um, I, it, I can talk about this for the longest time. The main idea came from you, and I thank you with all my heart because I saw that, and and I had a little bit of a taste of the 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 mm, wife. I guess <laughs> being a wife and you know uh, caring and and like caring for your partner although I don't have children I have younger sisters which they are almost like my That's... children mm -hmm. yes and um but when we have a partner and and uh you know it's um our you know spouse or I don't know husband or wife it doesn't matter it's almost like the, the care and the attention goes fully there as well, you know, so so your life changes because you care ab about another person as well. So now the majority of people, not just women, in general people, start forgetting about their dreams. They start forgetting about their passions and they get lost in the routine of life and that's it. That is it for them. And that never happened to me and I'm so happy that never happened to you and I wanted to write about it. I wanted oh. to bring it to maybe the younger generation or maybe even our generation uh, to see that it's possible. It is possible to do both, to be both because we can, because we have milk and fire in our veins. That's <laughs> so true. It's so true. It it's is. so true. And I'm, you know, I tell my husband all the time that like, I'm very lucky to have him in my life because, uh, so after I had Troy, I had really terrible postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And what is so uncommon about postpartum depression is that it can last up to like four to five years. Wow. Like, cause you, you create these new habits, Yeah, you absolutely, know, absolutely. and then you have to, un you have to like get out of those habits and then depending on what type of a support system you have around you is going to really dictate how fast that happens or yeah. your inner will, like your inner will for that change has to be something that's like perturbed inside of you. Like you got to, you have to go. Yeah. Um, he, he was always poking me like, you need to go train. You yes. know, you need to get back on the mat. Just this is yeah. before wrestling. Like you uh -huh. just need to get back on the mat. You need to be in that environment. Absolutely. Because that's what sports that's is the what, best trigger to yes. feel alive. Exactly. And like yeah. just to fill your cup. And he yeah. was constantly on my case about it. And there were so many times where I pushed him away from it. And I'm like, what? Like, you know, I because I get, I'll get overwhelmed because then course. I have these I have these like flashback memories of like having goals in the gym yeah. and competing and yeah. 
being in a fight camp and doing all that stuff, it's just overwhelming. And it's like, do I even want to go down that road? Like, mm -hmm. holy moly. Like, I can't. It's just different after you have a child and like, you know, hats off to all the women who just kind of like bounce right out of it. Yeah. I had a really hard time. Yeah. And I'm very grateful that I had him by my side. And, you know, we we've been through it. Like, yes, I'm so happy you had him by your side at that specific yeah. moment. And but I'm insanely proud of you for listening, for letting him actually get access to you and yeah. listening. Because that's also another thing we can, you know, we can say or do whatever we want. But if the person doesn't open to uh, to hear you out and to yeah. to actually consider what you're saying, it's it's like Chinese. You know? I know. Yeah. So I'm I'm very happy that you listen. Thank you. That yeah, takes he's, also a lot of power. Yeah, he's my he's my knight in shining armor. Like I gotta Beautiful. like. Beautiful. Sometimes you just gotta like let the veil down and be vulnerable to some things because yes. like and you know once I've just been through some shit as a kid. So mm -hmm. like who hasn't you know and. Yeah. I just guard myself in a in a completely different way than anybody else does because no one is me and I you can't compare me to anybody else. Absolutely. And it's just I don't know, he's it's gonna be like so romantic, but mm -hmm. he just is teaching me what love is really about. That is beautiful. I, I thought I knew and my parents had love, but I didn't really understand. Yeah. You know? And uh what was that? What's that one song? It's like, if you're not, if you don't have the person that you want, be happy with the one you're with. Or like, if you're not the person that you want to be, be happy with the person that you're with. Mm -hmm. So it goes for like the other person, but it also goes for yourself. Yeah. Like, you know, you look in the mirror and you're like, oh, I hate all this shit about me. Yeah. Mm, nah, know. who cares? Just you're living life. Yeah, uh, and that brings me to another topic that I really wanted to talk to you is how important is really um, believing in yourself in the first place? Like, because, look, you can understand me better than most people. When you are a public figure in a way or another and what you do involve other people following you and and just be part, like they, they always want to know all about you, right? And in mm -hmm. their eyes, uh, if fans or just followers, it doesn't matter, in their eyes you are perfect. They think you are, mm -hmm. but they don't know the demons that we have and when we wake up in the morning and we look in the mirror and what, the things that cross our mind, right? And maybe it is because of certain things we go through in the childhood. Maybe it is because of certain things we go through in that specific moment or of our life. But how important, just tell me please um, your point of view, how important it is to really believe in yourself no matter what, no matter where you are and what you do at the moment. It's everything. It's everything. Yeah. Because when you believe in yourself, you're also allowing yourself to, like, connect to things and uh, learn something new, possibly. Yeah. You know, and that's fucking scary. When you're, like, in your... When you're in your routines of bullshit and then you realize, like, oh, man, if, if I would have just been like this, it's everything because it, it, it could it's it could uh you know I always put it this way I always feel like I'm like three decisions away from like ruining my life that's like what depression made me feel mm -hmm. and when when I I know I am feeling depressed when I start feeling like that yeah and when I think that I also have to understand that I've made a lot of decisions, a lot of healthy decisions to be exactly where I am. Correct. You know, and honoring that and accepting that, yeah, I could fuck my life up in three decisions, you know, but I'm choosing not to. 
And then it just takes a different turn because yes. like you just... And what, do you have a recipe for that? Do you have a recipe or a little trick or maybe a little exercise that, that grounds you when you get into that mindset? Um, I usually will try to find a moment where I'm alone. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I just kind of like talk to myself. I'm like, the fuck are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, you know better. You know better. You know better than what your insecurities are screaming in your brain. Yeah. You've been through this before. Like, this is, this is the part of your day that you you can anticipate. I can depend on my depression to just kind of like crawl its way to the forefront of my brain yeah. or my, you know, and then tap into my insecurities and really just poke and prod. And when I'm hormonal, it's even fucking worse. Of course. Um, it's like, you just feel like a crazy person, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I usually try to just take a moment alone, whether it be in the garage or go outside or even just in the bathroom. And I just, I just am like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, and that was a big reason. I don't. That was a big reason why I started smoking weed when I was mm -hmm. like 23. Was yeah. because I needed. Because I wasn't. I wasn't a drinker. I was never a drinker. My dad was an alcoholic. There's Same. People in my family. <laughs> yeah, like my everybody was just alcoholics, and there have been so many times like where I've seen him be in a room and not be in a room. Yeah. That like I just. <sighs> It just, it just really killed everything for, I mean, like I drank, but I never, I don't enjoy it. Yeah. I will smoke weed because it really allows me to communicate what is going on inside. Yeah. And it's allowed me to figure out how to have a humor about things. Absolutely. Like you gotta laugh at some of the bullshit that like, really? You're three decisions away from ruining your life? Like... There's a homeless person walking yeah. outside, mm -hmm. like down the road, yeah. you know, like freezing because it's Florida cold and yeah. it gets cold outside. Yeah. And I, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, mm -hmm. but you can't compare. It's just a thing to yeah. do to give you perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. like. That is one of the exercises, actually. That is one of the way to get out of that headspace where, um, you know, I, I read a lot of books, especially lately because of COVID as well, on yeah. this specific matter. And I was always fascinated about that. And I tried to learn my best to be as present, as grounded, as real and uh, aware as possible in my life. And, and, and that takes a lot of time to learn because we are human beings and we get into old habits. And that mm -hmm. is one of the exercises, believe it or not, uh, into where if nothing else helps, think about how much worse thing could be for like for somebody else, like you said, for a homeless person right now, or, you know, for somebody that has you know, I don't know. It's has no abilities to even get out of the 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 um, uh, bed because of some illnesses or something like that. Yeah. It's 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 not the healthiest one to think about, but it's one of the exercises. It really is. Yeah, but even being aware yeah. of like com making that comparison mm -hmm. is like, come on, you yeah. know better. Like you just know better, so you didn't even need to go here in the first place. Yeah. You know, and it's it's being able to like laugh at yourself mm -hmm. and just do the right thing yeah like yeah. just uh, i don't know if um uh what how, uh, do you know who miss pat is no so she's a comedian and mm -hmm. like um one of her things is like if i can't laugh at it i can't own it okay yeah and for me with my personality and the way that i was raised that's something that like I, you know, I take little things, just like, like yeah. you're asking, like I take like little things and I'll put in my back pocket. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I'm, it's been helping me through this transition. Like I'm just really trying to find myself as a professional wrestler on a completely different stage now. And, um, I've had to use that card a lot. Yeah. Like I have, you have to laugh at yourself in order to like, just be able to shake it. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah. I, I like that. I like that. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Seriously. I feel like... Thanks for asking. I never really got to talk about it. Yeah. No. See, I, I know. And not many people ask about that. And not many people really uh, understand how much is behind it. How much work, self-work is yeah. behind it. It's more self-work than actual work to, you know, like people are thinking just in my industry, you know, it takes talent and, and probably, you know, you just step on stage, you just do your thing. No, it takes more than that. It takes more than that. How about, oh, yeah. how about all the, all the stuff you have in your personal life that you have to <laughs> leave behind, forget about it while you're on stage, while in your case, Ooh. you are fighting, you know, <laughs> and you have to be I, I don't know, like, there's way more, there's way, way more. That's why I love to talk about it, actually. It's one of the topics that helped me, just like you said, to, to have, you know, to listen other people's um, perspective on it, other people's idea on it, because we are all human beings, we really are, and it doesn't matter mm -hmm. how old we are, it doesn't matter really what nationality we are, it doesn't matter really what languages we speak, we are human beings and we have moments where we are not okay. It, yeah. it is it is true. And I like to do one thing when that happens and maybe that will help you as well or maybe you do that already. When something is really overwhelming and I, I understand that I can't get out of it for, it's not just a moment. Mm -hmm. I convince myself that it's okay not to be okay. I'm giving myself that break. It is okay not to be okay oh, because so we good. need, yes, we need that break. We need that pause. We are not machines. We, we don't always have to smile. We don't always have to be, you know, present for everybody. It's just, it's okay to take that step back and not be okay. If it takes an hour, a day, a week, a month, it's okay. Take that time, use it for yourself to self reflect, to read something, maybe even to do nothing. If it is what yeah. you need, even to do nothing, then you'll snap out of it right away. But yeah. because we are so harsh on ourselves and we never take a break and we never, we are like, no, put your shit together. You, 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 you go right through it. And yes, we've done that too. Sometimes, obviously that's also needed, but not oh, always, yeah. not always. So I absolutely, I love that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, but yeah, of I, course. It's totally fine to just be the way that you want to be in that moment. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. so true. It is. I feel like we got super philosophical. I really oh, wanted yeah. to. Oh, yeah. No, I'm all about it. Because it's, <laughs> Me it's too. hard. It's so freaking hard. It's so hard to just, uh, like, you know, it just is what it is in yeah. that moment. Yeah. You know, like, that's not what, that's not your, fi like, you don't have to explain to anybody that's not your final mm -hmm. form. True. You know what I mean? It's True. like, you don't also don't have to explain to anybody that this is a moment in time. Yes, it's true. This is, it's one of those moments where I wish people just had a little bit more decency on their end and yeah. sense that maybe that person just needs a little bit of privacy. Correct, correct. It's just, but that's completely uh, gone now. So It is, especially in our... Um, in our careers uh, because it comes with the job to be out there it comes with yeah. the job to be present and when you aren't people assume people assume bad things sometimes you know i've had it happen to me a couple of times when i was going through something really terrible in my life and i literally took breaks from social media and people were freaking out because i never do it normally it is part of my everyday job to like you know, post something about my life, something about yeah. my band, something about my career, yeah. something about, and it's the same for with you. Correct. Something little, something big, it doesn't matter. And when it's, it's days that you don't, uh, people assume. So, um, you know, it's hard because you don't want them to assume, but at the mm -hmm. same time you are in that mindset where you're like, you don't care because it's sometimes, Shit happens to us just like shit happens to everybody else, you know? And, yeah. um, but at the same time, I don't feel like explaining what I'm going through because I don't want my private life, for example, to be, you know, 
I'm just not that type of a person. I can say a couple of things, but that's it. But like going into details and explaining why I'm having nightmares or why I ha I'm having sleepless night nights or why I'm losing weight, I don't feel like telling that to everybody because it's something that I'm dealing with. I don't even understand myself. I'm dealing exactly. with between me and me, you know? Um, I'm bringing this back. The decency. Yeah. The, like, hash, like when people ask a rude question, you're like... The D's like, <laughs> like, what happened to having a sense about things? You know, mm -hmm. like, it, you don't always have to be so direct. Yeah. That's my one thing. Sometimes it's like the world needs a little bit more sensibility. Absolutely. Just a little bit, not a lot. I'm but not you know, for like, you know what uh, is uh, the reason why people are forgetting about being more sensitive or more, um, uh, I don't know, in a way, um, yeah, more decent, just like you said. It's because, unfortunately, at least that's my point of view, people are not present. They are not aware of what's happening in general. They're not aware. They, they sleepwalk through their life, and they have these expectations about everything. Instead mm -hmm. of, instead of, ground a little bit and actually understand that this is what's happening you know and yeah. and maybe you know this person needs a break or whatever it is that is going on you know majority of people that are not decent or uh, um, they appear to be ignorant is merely because they're just like in the clouds somewhere yeah because or they're probably appeasing somebody else Maybe they're trying to get information for something else. <laughs> and they think that by doing it and being ruthless, they will get it. Maybe. And that never I works out. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm. I've just I, been, oh, so ugh, I hate it. I hate yeah. it. <laughs> Tell me more. I want, I really want to, I'm changing the subject here a little bit. I'm sure we will come back to this. Um, oh yeah. I really wanted to, for you to uh, share that little, um, transition in your life, that change in your life uh, uh, from uh, when you moved to a different country, at what age you moved to, to America and how did it happen, if, if that's okay to us. Yeah, that's, I, it's, I've never been able to like really talk about it. So we immigrated to upstate New York when I was five oh, and yeah. we, my family, we're all Russian Jewish and mm -hmm. we actually had a synagogue, there's like a family in a synagogue that sponsored us. Oh, nice. My my grandma um, on my dad's side was really sick, so we immigrated because she needed better health care. Gotcha. And, um, yeah, like, we got sponsored by this family, and, you know, my mom and my dad just started taking baby steps um, to getting their green cars and being able to find work and mm -hmm. all that stuff, and it was a really scary time. I realize now... Like, my mom was 43 with okay. three kids, and I was five. Like, and she just had to restart her entire life. Yeah. Like, she oh. had to, like, totally uh, restart her life. Sorry, go ahead. Are your siblings older? Yeah, I have two older brothers. Gotcha. Oh, and my oldest brother. Mm -hmm. This little shit. <laughs> At the time he was 18, he had run off to... uh he had run off to like Romania or something, mm -hmm. like ran away to like be a part of this mob. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, wow. But like he didn't come until like a whole year after we gotcha. were already there. My mom like left his passport and a plane ticket with our neighbor and was like, please, mm -hmm. if you see him, just give this to him. Wow. Like, <sighs> so Crazy. when he came, he got the beat down. <laughs> mm. I know my my dad didn't talk to him for like four months. I mean, yeah. I'd be putting myself in her. I can actually like a little bit put myself in her shoes. She was very stressed out. Like she went gray. Time. Like yeah. she went fucking gray, and it was a very stressful time. Yeah. But we're here. <laughs> you're here. Yes, you're here. And obviously, this is home for you because you were only five when you moved. It's uh, yeah. it's been. Six years for me since I moved here. I lived in different countries throughout my life. Holy moly, your yeah. accent is like, your English is Thank you. almost 
like it's actually perfect so. really thank you thank you so yeah. much i um i studied languages in the university i uh, used to live in italy my family also uh moved from moldova but i was already a teenager at uh, seven the age of 17 we moved uh, to live in italy my mom had a better job opportunity as a um, nurse there at the time and slowly she brought us back uh, there and I am the oldest out of all the siblings so I had to kind of take care of my sisters when my mom was working all the time and yeah I lived in different countries throughout my life I'm also not really um, I mean, I was born in Moldova, but my parents aren't. So my mom was also born in Moldova, but um, her mom is uh, Polish and her father is Greek. Oh, wow. And, yeah, and my dad, he is actually Armenian for many generations. And there's probably, I don't know, any mixed in, mixtures in his... Uh, I yeah. I've had some experience with Armenians. Yeah, he... Like, uh, when I lived in LA, like the gym that I trained out of. Oh, really? Like, all Armenians. Yeah, they they say there's a lot of Armenian people in LA. Yeah, I uh, I don't know any here, but um, yeah, my dad is Armenian, so I used to live in Armenia as well. And then you know we lived in Italy. I did uh, languages in the university. That's probably why my English had already kind of a good start when I moved here. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I uh, it's been almost six years. Yeah, since I'm here. And, and and it feels it feels like home for me because I don't have any more relatives in Moldova besides my band. Oh yeah. wow, mm -hmm. that's so interesting. Yeah. So how was it moving from Italy to here? So I moved from Italy back to Moldova. Oh, back to Moldova. Actually, and, and that's okay. and that's how we created the band. Yeah. So I um. lived. Uh, yeah, my family still stayed in Italy. My family is in Italy for over twenty years now. Um, almost twenty years. I'm sorry. Uh, to be exact, 18 years exactly, um, since we fully moved there. My mom is 23 years there. Um, so, yeah, it's it's like home for them already. They, they're forgetting the language and stuff. Only oh, speaking. my goodness, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and But I, I couldn't, I don't know, for some reason, I didn't really feel like staying uh, after I, uh, I, was, I was done with the university. And I was traveling back and forth a lot. And then just, yeah, the band started and things were going great. And, yeah, so I lived in, in Moldova and then moved here. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's fucking cool. Yeah, I, I changed a lot. Uh, it's not my favorite thing to do. It's pretty stressful to start over. Basically, oh, seriously over every time. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, I'm here now. I, I like it. I... Uh, I travel a lot, obviously, for, for, for my work, but uh, I love it here. How do you feel? Uh, I definitely can't complain. Good. good I just, good. I just, Florida is, it's, it's a whole other beast. Uh-huh. Because uh, the humidity here does something to people. It does. I've been there once, just, so. It's, uh, you know, it's a whole other beast, but I can't complain. I just, my one thing is I don't miss the cold. I hate mm -hmm. I, I never, I took for granted, like, warmth, because yeah. if I lived anywhere that was colder than here, waking up would be so painful. Oh, girl, like, I that's, just have, that's I, why I'm in Vegas. <laughs> I know. So, like, I just wake up, and I'm just, like, because I have arthritis everywhere, and I'm just, like, oh, just, and our son, when he wakes up, I'm not even kidding, like, you know how kids will slowly open the door and, like, creep on in and, like, crawl into bed? No, this motherfucker goes to the door. <laughs> bangs it forward <laughs> it hits the wall where we ev this is this is at least like twice a week and we both of us like pop over we're like what the fuck <laughs> and he's like <laughs> he's like i need to pee pee and i'm like go to the bathroom what are you doing i just thought somebody broke into the house but then he after he uses the bathroom he does that just so he can ask us Oh. Can I sleep in your bed? Oh, you know, that's like what it's it is. so hard to say no to him. <laughs> of course. He is the cutest. I know, he really is. So and cute. he uh his love of music. Really? There you go. Oh, did he everything. hear did, did he hear Infected Rain? Did you play Not yet. Some? You should play Fire for him. <laughs> I will. I will because he's been getting more into like music videos. That music video is so good. Thank you. Like 
he's gonna be into it thank you speaking he's about that um when we were deciding to um do a music video for this specific song uh because we um we're recording the album right our album is uh gonna be out in january and this song right away even before we knew um what we're gonna film about we right away knew we need to film a music video for it just because of how the song is you know and we had zero doubts about how to make this video right away i was like i need to show in the the best way possible how um gentle uh beautiful and immaculate a woman can be and at the same time how fearless and powerful a woman can be if in in, in the circumstances you know of life so mm -hmm. so like i need i needed to show that transformation from you know uh this um beauty <laughs> from into you know, the beast like, yeah this beauty into the beast and um it was very emotional i cried while filming that music video because as i said i was me personally i was going through some rough times uh prior to covid and then with covid okay beauty and the beast beauty oh, and the beast fingers uh yeah so so i was saying that uh it was a very emotional time for me to actually film that because i i could feel it through my skin and uh did you like it tell me your i loved it the fight scenes were great like those I are was... actual uh fighter girls they are in jujitsu from moldova oh really yes one of the girls is actually a police officer Yes, and she agreed to be part of. I'm super, super happy and so, so, so I'm thankful. I'm so proud of that for you. Yes. That is awesome. Yes, they are. They both are, uh, you know, practicing jujitsu. And when we were trying to find, um, you know, who to to who is going to be the fighters, we we were almost like, um, I don't know. We were very. Um, it was not easy. We were like, okay, maybe we will just make, you know, men fight because it's it was easier to find, uh, uh, you know, male fighters than mm -hmm. than girls. But then we we just got lucky. Somebody knew somebody, and then we yeah, finally yeah, yeah. found people, and they did such a great job. It I they did. had goosebumps during the whole, and 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 it's so funny because during the video. We couldn't put too much in there, but really the the amount of time these girls were fighting it was so much I was there like behind the 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 cage I was there, and I would like cheer up, cheer them up, and like actually tell them uh, you know when they do something amazing, I would like m let them know so they can like yeah. repeat it or something, and oh my God, like even telling you this right now gives me goosebumps oh my God, that was a so lot of awesome. fun a lot of fun to it tell. looked it really like. I was pleasantly surprised by okay. all of that. It was Good. really nice. very well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it like I can't say that about a lot of fight scenes that I see in mm -hmm. some music videos now. Or video or or movies, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like even when the movies like it has to be some like OGs that are in it that mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. But I was very I was like, oh shit, this is actually <laughs> Yeah, I was trying to follow. Like yeah. I had to like rewind it because I wanted to follow what was going on. Mm -hmm. And I you. loved, I loved the so that like I really admire the undressing okay. of you of what you had going on to like step on the mat. You know, like that telling that story, people don't understand. Like mm -hmm. this is like the one. Like something that I'm doing in wrestling that I don't think a lot of people really understand yet is like when I wrestle, I like have no makeup on. Yeah. I'm bare I'm bare minimum. Like yeah. my hair is in my braid. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? I yeah, don't absolutely. have like the I don't have the weaves and I don't have the lashes and I don't have the foundation. I used to, but like it doesn't make sense it doesn't. for who I am. Mm hmm It's very and, like it's very different. I wanted to be as raw and as authentic. I really exactly. am. I was not just taking off that makeup, but I was taking it off without the actual beauty products that I would do at the home with all the fancy. Mm. I had to go rough on my face. I was red yeah. and it was like burning. I wanted to show that like as real as possible. Yeah, it looked great. Thank I you. was really into it very much into it because that's something that's not 
people don't understand how hard that is. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, like you, you out there naked, basically. It is really exact, being fully, like literally. Mm -hmm. You're just full. It's just you and whatever skills that you have yeah. to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's scary and it's pretty, but it's dangerous. But it's like, oh, I don't know if I want to, like, look at that, you know? Yeah. Can you yeah. can you tell me, growing up, did you, uh, were you, like, a fighter? Would you, did you, uh, <laughs> yeah, were you feisty? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I was pretty, like... I was the I was the only girl and my my oldest brother would make fun of me and he's like that's not my little sister that's my little brother. Uh-huh. And um <laughs> you know like I yeah. That's awesome. We you he, he would have these like crazy parties at our at my mom's house sometimes and like he'd be like I'll give you 10 bucks if you choke this guy out and I'm like <laughs> okay. You know like it was just like and uh that I didn't really get like I got bullied in school. And my dad put the fear in me as far as like not getting, he's like, you better not get into trouble because you, you need to be more worried about coming home yeah. and telling me that you got in trouble yeah. than actually getting in trouble. Okay. So I never really got in trouble in school. I've been pushed, I would be pushed into lockers, shoved, called names, all of it, put my hands behind my back and I just stood in front of the person and me just like restraining myself like showed them that poke it anymore it'll be it'll be bad news yeah. like i started judo when i was six so like mm -hmm. i uh i wasn't afraid to like defend myself first with my mouth and then you yeah. know with, with my body there was like there was like a little boy who tried to bully me and i threw him onto the grass because like he did karate and i did Taekwondo and I, or yeah. no, I did judo. Did and that, I was yeah. like, I go, I go karate. He was like, karate so much better than judo. <sighs> karate so like, and he would bully me and pester yeah. me about it. And then he actually tried to kick me and I caught his kick and I tossed him right mm -hmm. in the grass. And then he went to his mom and then his mom came to my apartment oh my <laughs> and tried to yell at me. But then my brother saw the whole thing happen. She's like, yeah. she was defending herself. Yeah. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I had I had similar yeah. situations in school too. Uh, uh, I I wasn't bullied too much because I was very good in school, and like mm -hmm. I I wasn't even trying to be very good. I just I, I always loved learning for some reason, and I was good. But at the same time, I was very boyish. I was um, short hair, baggy jeans. I was I was like the tall boy, you know, yeah. uh, super boyish. And I was doing Taekwondo for years and people wasn't weren't really messing around with me too much. But I had situations like yours where boys were uh, trying and then their parents would come and say, you don't understand. They like you. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good way? Like you teach your son to show love like that. Okay. You know? Yeah. Like exactly. Yeah. So I, I definitely I definitely feel you there. I wasn't very I wasn't feisty at all though, uh, growing up, but I was very boyish. Yeah. I was I really was really boyish too. Like I just I got bullied but not to the point where I had to like physically defend myself because I was a I was a big girl. Like mm -hmm. I I w my dad was a professional power lifter, like a p professional oh, nice. power lifter. So he was like a big guy. And mm -hmm. my mom was a curvy woman. Like she had a really nice figure. And like, I just got like the best of both worlds from them. Beautiful. And I was like a, I was a stacked girl. Like I was big. Mm -hmm. Like I had like not even muscle. Like I had just said, I had baby fat up until I was like 16. <laughs> like it was, <laughs> I was just a, like, I love to eat and I love to train, so it was mm -hmm. weird, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. How I tall always, are you now? How tall are you now? I'm 5'7". I'm not, I'm still like average height. And I can't wear heels anymore because my ankles are all messed up. Mm -hmm. <sighs> no, that's Little tall. Days. That's, that's you know, that's not too tall, but that's a tall woman, you know? Yeah, yeah I'm, decent. I'm 5'5". Five five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my cousin is 5'5", five five, so I know exactly how tall yeah. you are. Well, with the hair, too. Uh, no, I don't calculate that. <laughs> With this, I look even taller. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You could like hide stuff in there. I, I was. I know, right? Like, like mm -hmm. weapons and stuff. Be like. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just snacks. So um okay so 
did you uh when did you understand that you wanted to be in this career was it like after um you were you know you had your husband in that uh specific um career or was it like way before that when, when um, you knew that this is on, something i want to try at least so when i got my wwe contract um you know we had a conversation i was like I'd be dumb if I didn't take this opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'd be dumb if I didn't take this opportunity and try to figure it out and have a job and learn a new skill. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And at first it was like that. And then I started to understand what the job was mm -hmm. and what the job required in order for there to be success. Yeah. And... What made me realize that I wanted to pursue this more was actually when I got fired by the mm -hmm. WWE because I had learned all of this stuff, but it's just this suitcase full of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it's valuable, mm -hmm. you know? So I really had to take a look to understand like who I was, what I was about, and um, what I could contribute to the business, specifically for the women that are in the business. Cause mm -hmm. the women in this business are, it's just not fair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, like it's just, uh, yes, they have opportunities, it's just a different, they're still not getting the respect that they deserve. I see. Does that make sense? Absolutely, absolutely. And, um, you know, I feel also too. People have to know about that and I'm glad you brought it up, you know. Yeah, like, and there's a lot of women in this business who continuously want to challenge themselves and learn and experience as much as possible because it's literally, you travel to be a part of a show and you get into a fake fight and either your persona wins or your persona loses. Yeah. And how do you make that entire experience a story for the people that are watching so that when they go home, they're left with this emotion? Yeah. It's kind of like, mu it's actually exactly like music. Yeah. You know, you just want to ring their bell somehow. Yeah, and absolutely. So it's very interesting because I needed to understand that I have no... Because I had a suitcase full of stuff, mm -hmm. right? I needed to realize that I really can't expect anything from this business. Mm -hmm. You know, I... In the WWE, I was... I was in the best shape of my life. I was out working girls that were like 10 years younger than me. I was, you know, performing on lazy days with like the top athletes. And that was me like coming in and not having any caffeine and mm -hmm. still doing these workouts and drills and all this stuff and still showing up and showing out and every time. And then I got let go and I'm like, oh, do I want to keep doing this because I feel salty and I have something to prove? Yeah. Or... Do I really value what I've learned about myself in the last three years? And okay. do I just put my best foot forward and learn as much more as I can and see if I can change my life so my son has a better opportunity for when he grows up and starts making decisions for himself? Mm -hmm. And, like, that's just where it's at. I've learned so much about myself that I kind of want to learn a little bit more, and I am. Like, I'm realizing that... Time is of the, just going back to the beginning of the conversation, like time is of the essence. Yeah. You can't get any of this shit back. No. And I know I'm not going to be able to be this physical forever. Absolutely. And yeah. it's about fucking time that I, like, I just really take advantage of my athleticism mm -hmm. and this opportunity and put my foot down and just onward and upward and see where it takes me. And if I get dropped off at somewhere, I'll figure out something else. You know, yeah. like I just being able, I can depend on myself and it's been a long, 
and every day like you bat like you have to have that conversation like you can depend on yourself and the decisions that you're going to make to be worth it for you and your family or for yeah. your dog or for your fish like yeah. it doesn't you got this that's exactly exactly that's exactly why i had to put that down you know in in the lyrics for this specific song because it is mm -hmm. what what the the right now is all you have today right now it it's what matters you know and and today right now is in your hands and you got this you yeah. know so i'm so happy that you brought that up and yeah. i i can understand that even without knowing you uh so close and personally this song is even more about you and women like you and um just i'm happy that that happened i'm insanely insanely proud of you i really am. i'm proud of you Thank for you because like you even telling me that those girls that were in the video, it's just like, there's a million of us's. Yeah. You know? But, like, it's deciding to do something. Mm -hmm. And then you end up realizing you're all connected somehow. Yeah, absolutely. And that's pretty fucking cool. It is. It is. And I, I can't thank you enough, especially for the time that you dedicated today for us. I'm going to wrap this up with the two classical uh, questions that I normally love to ask uh, my guests. And they are super simple. Um, what is that one thing that you're very, very tired to answer like that one question that people ask you all the time either in interviews or in your everyday life something uh, either relevant to your career or your personal life what is it that you're like oh really you're asking me this again like i'm so tired to answer this question do you have that um what in general i'm tired of people asking me about business that is not about me okay okay i'm People are asking me questions on behalf of, for other people. Like yeah. it's it's intended for other people, and they try to use me as like a like a link there. And yeah, I, yeah, I understand. I can't stand it. But they think that I can't see through it. Mm -hmm. And I've developed like fifty million different ways to just be like, <laughs> I see you, motherfucker, and <laughs> no, I'm not going to answer the question. Mm -hmm. And it just, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to bleep that out. I can't. No, that's it's, it's fine. Okay. No, no, no. It's I totally just, fine. I be interested in talking to me about what it is we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay. People, what is the yeah. best? So this, this probably answered my next question because that my next question is, what do you wish people were more about? Like, what do you wish people asked you more that they never think about asking? Um, about my interests, okay. I feel like interests are important and they're an easy topic. Super easy because that's what makes Super your easy. personality. Yeah. When exactly. It's like, your and I feel like, uh, I feel like that should be more of like a conversation of connectivity because mm -hmm. like cooking is so general, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody loves to cook. I can guarantee you we can connect like five people over one dish. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. food or yeah. music or yeah. literature or mm -hmm. painting. I don't know. That needs to be more of a conversation, not people's business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it did kind I of like, like roll right into that. I like that a lot. Okay. Yeah. I like that a lot. Well, thank you so, so much for being here. Thank with you. Me. This was awesome. It was. It was. And I hope to see you when we um, tour either uh, somewhere around uh, your neck of the wood or uh, just in general. When you, if you I'm know. ever in Vegas doing a show. You are oh. more than. Oh, I thank you. you. I would thing. love oh, yeah. to. I never been to a, 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 a fight in general, any type of fight life. Never been. It's Oh yeah, yeah, They're yeah! Fun. Absolutely, I'll take you on that. Uh, you, yeah. you would actually really love Bloodsport. My old coach Josh, it's the one show that I just did in LA, mm -hmm. and he runs it out of like this Ukrainian uh, convention center, oh, and nice. it's the crowd, amazing. 
but yeah. I will talk about it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Let me know when you're in Vegas. I will let you know uh, when our next tour is. Hopefully, we will visit Florida because during the, our last tour, we, we didn't visit Florida at all. And so, uh, you are automatically invited together Yay. with your family. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, my God, trip. Yeah. Really, just but... lose it. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. Uh, but basically what it is, it's a specific uh, episode, uh, I guess, season uh, on my mm -hmm. YouTube channel uh, dedicated to this. And, and uh, it's just all different people of art, different people in the in different type of industries that I speak to. And it, it started because of COVID because I couldn't meet them in person. And, yeah. And but. People keep telling me to keep doing that. So obviously I thought about you right away. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's a yes. Just keep doing it. Okay, keep I will. 